So uh, we derived in the last slide this expression. Uh, and uh, uh, both GN and uh, mm, so we have a path integral expression for uh, GN IF. Uh, in order to get a path integral expression for this, we need a path integral expression for this as well. Uh, so I will show now that this can also be given, uh, written in, 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 in the form of path integral. Um, so that is given by the matrix element. So let's consider the matrix element, uh, compute TF phi F TI phi I and uh, that is uh, given by uh, phi f in terms of time evolution operator minus i h hat t f minus t i over h bar uh, phi i. Okay, and um, again uh, by going to the same argument, inserting complete. Uh, energy states, com complete basis for the energy states, uh, you arrive at uh, psi m phi f, psi m star phi i e to the power minus i e m t f minus t i over h bar. And then uh, following the same argument, we rotating and taking the limit, infinite time limit, Tf goes to plus infinity and Ti goes to minus infinity. And uh, this simply becomes, this part becomes zero because E omega is zero and uh, all excited states are go, the contribution go to zero because of this suppressing factor. Uh, one basically has psi omega phi f, psi omega phi i. So the final result therefore for the in-point function uh, which we have defined to be the vacuum expression value of the time order product of uh, insertions is given by the future infinity phi f time order product of phi hat x1 to phi hat xn. Uh, past infinity phi i divided by uh, the, um, this is star, so divided by this um, uh, psi psi star, which basically appears here, psi psi star inverse. So, um, so that is this matrix element uh, in the infinite time limit. So that is infinite, infinite, future infinity phi f, uh, past infinity phi i. And now we simply write these two matrix elements. So this is a ratio of two matrix elements and we can simply write it as path integral, which is integral d phi i to f exponential i over h bar is phi phi x1 to phi xn. Uh, divided by uh, integral d phi i to f exponential i over h bar is phi. Um, where s of phi is given by integral dt minus infinity to plus infinity integral dx vector times Lagrangian density. So uh, uh, you see this, uh, so we have managed to write the endpoint Green's function, uh, which we think is a vacuum expression value of uh, the n uh, phi insertions um, is given by the ratio of these two path integrals. Each of them uh, depend on the boundary condition. There are specific boundary conditions, but GN does not have a, specification of a boundary condition. So this must be independent. The ratio must be independent of the boundary conditions. So both numerator and denominator explicitly depend on uh, boundary condition, but not the ratio. So 
both numerator and denominator explicitly depend on boundary condition but not the ratio. But sorry, but uh, but the ratio does not. But the ratio does not. Uh, now we shall uh, uh, develop a technique of computing uh, Green's function uh, uh, using the method of what is called generating functional. And uh, this issue of boundary condition in the following discussion, when I discuss generating functional, uh, this issue of boundary condition will remain implicit. I will not um, address that. Um, and I will make further comments on, on that as I go along. So, uh, so compute, um, Uh, the generating uh, the the Green's function G n using the technique of generating functional. This is what we are going to do now. So, what is the generating functional? Um, uh, it is given by it is defined to be the following path integral uh, divided by d phi exponential i over h bar s phi, uh, where this s phi j is given by l plus h bar j phi um uh, uh, i think uh, i have already uh, uh, explained this notation this notation is this notation is nothing but um, this this uh, indicates that there is an integration uh, this bracket indicates that there is an integration over the argument so these are functions of x and this is like d4x so so this is um dgx x okay now j here is uh, called an external field external source It is an external source. It does not have any dynamics. Uh, there, uh, the action is otherwise uh, does not depend on J. It, it doesn't have its time derivative. Um, J is an external function, um, which is fixed, which is our choice here. Um, and um, it's a scalar field. And uh, since uh, the other field phi has, has been integrated, path integrated over, this entire thing depends on j. Uh, and the dependence is the functional de dependence because, um, because, because this j goes under the integration. So the entire j function goes in the input um, in order to produce a value for wj and because it is integrated over. Um, now, uh, this generating, uh, the claim is that uh, this gn, the generating functional encodes uh, all these gns, uh, the, the uh, Green's function, and we shall see uh, that is the case, okay? Now, <clears throat> um, as I mentioned that I'm, in, our, in my discussion, this boundary condition issue will remain implicit. Uh, we will see that there is a formula uh, so wj, it looks like it does not depend on the boundary condition in any, any way. We will 
cook up a formula, we will derive a formula for g n in, in terms of w j. But in order to calculate w j, I have to calculate this path integral and this path integral for this path integral, I have to put certain boundary conditions. We will eventually compute, uh, 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 we have to choose boundary conditions for that. And we will eventually compute w j using Fourier transform. And uh, that will implicitly assume certain boundary behavior. And um, I would encourage you to think about it, how exactly the boundary condition is being chosen uh, when we calculate, we will calculate it in the next lecture. Um, I will encourage you to uh, think uh, in, the, in the next lecture when you calculate it using Fourier transformation, we will not uh, address the boundary conditions, but it is implicitly assumed that certain boundary behavior uh, must be required in order for that analysis to go through. And I would encourage you to uh, think about that, um, uh, how that is happening. Okay, now, so how do I show that uh, um, uh, this WJ uh, encodes all these GN is the next question to ask. So all you need to do is to calculate, uh, all you need to do is to tailor expand WJ, uh, tailor expand WJ around J equals zero. Then Wj will be given by sum over n equal to zero to infinity, one over factorial n uh, Wn x1 to xn, jx1 to jxn. And this uh, has integration over all these x1 to xn. These are the integration variables. What is this uh, from the functional Taylor expansion, uh, which is part of the assignment uh, and is nothing but this Wn is nothing but the functional derivative x1 to functional derivative jxn acting on w of j at j equals zero. Now let us calculate um, what is this given the path integral definition of w j. Let us calculate what are what is the functional derivative of j calculated at j equal to zero. So let us calculate that. Del del j at x1. Uh, so j dependence in wj, j dependence is only upstairs, right? The, this one is just like a constant factor as far as j derivative is concerned. So we just calculate the j derivative of the numerator, uh, which is integral d phi exponential i by h bar is of phi plus i j phi, okay? Now this factor is j independent, so the j derivative will act on this factor. So this is given by integral d phi exponential i by h bar s phi times del del j x one it will be called i j phi. If you calculate this, what it means is that just like the usual derivative of an exponential function, it is this same exponential function times um, derivative of, uh, of, uh, of this exponent with respect to the, with respect to uh, j x one. And the exponent is nothing but i times d4 y j y phi y. And this is given by i j phi uh, times i d4 y delta 4 
y minus x1 phi y. And that is, this is nothing but phi of x1. So i times phi at x1 times e to the power i j phi. Okay. So given this, uh, this result of this derivative is nothing but um, integral d phi e to the exponential i by h bar s phi plus i j phi i phi x1. Okay, now if we have a multiple derivatives with respect to j, then each derivative will bring down a factor of i times phi x1 and therefore uh, del del j x1 del del j xn at j equal to zero uh, is given by path integral d phi uh, exponential i by h bar s phi i phi x1 to i phi xn divided by integral d phi exponential i by h bar s phi, right? We do, we do, we take the derivative, each derivative will bring down a factor of i times phi, time, i times phi x. And uh, at the end of this calculation, you set j equal to zero and therefore the j phi terms disappears from here. And this is nothing but uh, i to the power n, there are n factors times g n. The vacuum expectation value uh, of the n phi's, uh, which is here this one this is gn this is this expression is the same as this expression hmm? so uh, phi, therefore uh, we arrive at a conclusion that gn is given by 1 over i del del j x1 to 1 over i del del j xn acting on wj at j equal to zero. That's what it is. Uh, basically, this is the reason why wj is called a generating function. This is a generating function for the for the endpoint Green's function. Um, and uh, that is what a generative function should satisfy. Um, um, so in the next lecture, as I mentioned earlier, we'll see how to calculate WJ using Fourier transform. And uh, I made those comments earlier. Let me let me explicitly uh, write it uh, here um, about the boundary condition. So this uh, uh, will be calculated. Um, using Fourier transformation. Um, that that procedure automatically or implicitly um, assume um, the boundary behavior. Okay. So that's about it.